training Simclear and Swab on ImageNet is pretty simple. It's as simple as running this command. Uh, you would need a lot of GPUs and multi-node, but the standard hyperparameters are all hard-coded to make it easier for you to train. You can obviously go into the script and change a bunch of those based on your system, but yeah, this pretty much is all you need. And then to fine tune your trained encoder on the downstream tasks, uh, it, I would say yeah, it's a slightly more complicated uh, set of hyperparameters, but we, all you need to punch in are these numbers. And this script is kind of like, the hyperparameters are common uh, across both these models. And so, yeah, this is for replicating the current results we have, but what do we have different from all the other available SimClear models out there on the internet? And basically none of them do all gather with gradients across GPUs. So you generate a bunch of negative, negative samples on each of your GPUs in uh, case of multi-GPU and multi-node training, but I couldn't find a single implementation in open source which did this. And hence, all of them weren't utilizing all negative samples to the optimum. And this is where we include our uh, grad all gather function from Lightning. And the basic idea is that once you're generating representations or Zs as simply refers uh, to it, it on each GPU, then you send those Zs to every other GPU across multiple nodes and so on uh, while you're training the model. And the gradient part of all gather, what it does, it, it sends back the gradients from each of these GPUs to every single one of the GPUs back again. So it's this basically. And this follows the simple uh, rule of backprop where if you are branching out in the forward direction, you add the gradients back in the reverse direction. So it's uh, that simple. So yeah, I wouldn't say it's, uh, yeah, it's not complicated or anything in this sense. And this is the update. And based on this, we were able to get some really close results on SimClear and Swab uh, from our Bolts implementation. The reason we don't have those scores mashed uh, we kind of figured that out as well, and we shouldn't have those scores in the next run. But right now, yeah, for simpler, we have 68.4, which is less than a point from the reported number. And on SWAV, we have 74. And right now, the only difference between the official implementation and this one is that we were saving our checkpoints based on the validation loss. And we should instead, we should have been saving the checkpoints just for the last epoch. And then for swap, we got a hyperparameter wrong. So un that's unfortunate, but that's the reason for the discrepancy uh, in the results. Uh, apart from that, uh, in this update, I would just say that the next steps for these two models are that we are trying to get them to run on TPUs. We do have quite a few issues open up on those, but we definitely listen to our users and that's our priority right now. And then we are trying to speed up data augmentations for both of these models using either DALI or Cornea. We don't have any results on this right now, but we definitely hope to see a big speed up in performance. So yeah, that was kind of an update on these two models. Cool, thanks Ananya. Um, we have a question from the audience asking if you have any tips on how to debug lightning and if there's any uh, line by line uh, way to do debugging like PyTorch. Uh, debug lightning and I'm sorry, uh, could you repeat the second part of the question? Yeah, I think in general, they're asking if there a way to do debugging like PyTorch line by line running the code. And I think, yeah, we have a uh, feature flag called fast dev run that allows you to do something just like that. And it make, allows you to basically like a compiler, the first thing that your training uh, would do uh, before uh, running over your batch is just go one by line um, to make sure if there's any errors or anything that could be wrong uh, before you, you know, get to a validation step, you can just uh, do all of that uh, before you start your training. But do you have any other tips, Ananya? 
Uh, I think you could use like the standard debugger that we have in PyTorch. Uh, apart from that, I wouldn't say anything specific. Then we use, when, then we definitely have a bunch of flags and the Lightning Trainer that we could limit the number of train and validation steps and all of those for the debugging purposes. But yeah, for line by line debugging, I would say a debugger or if uh, you're not comfortable with a debugger because I certainly am not, then the good, good old print statements come out, I would say, but yeah. Yeah, uh, that's something I would say for, for debugging. Uh, then I guess we do have some other questions, right? Uh, I'm working on a four node NVIDIA GPU cluster with SSH. Still have some problems to get Lightning Trainer working on Jupyter Hub. Do you have a link to GitHub project or similar setup? Uh, do we have, I think we do have a link to, uh, we definitely have link to Colab notebooks uh, on the Lightning or Bolts thing. Uh, Eden, do we have something on the Jupyter Hub thing? Um, we should have something. I'm not sure if it's in the repo, but we can uh, follow up later and I can send some examples from, from Jupyter.